Hey, the name's Cruel, that's King Rob Rule, and welcome to my quick mouse and keyboard guide for the longsword in Monster Hunter Rise. This video will reflect the 5 minute guides I've already done, but showcase mouse and keyboard controls. These are the inputs that I use and I find helpful, so if you don't agree, feel free to make any changes you like, and be sure to leave suggestions in the comments. First things first, key bindings. Make normal attack the left click button, make special attack the right click button, Make Wirebug Reticle the R key. Make Guard slash Weapon Special Action the side mouse button. For Crouch slash Dodge, use the space bar. For Dash slash Sheath Weapon, use Shift. And everything else is up to you. To draw your weapon, press the left mouse button. You can draw into an attack by moving forward while pressing the left mouse button. To put your weapon away again, either dash with the Shift key or press E. Or whatever you set, use item to be. Your basic combo can be strung together infinitely with the left mouse button. The right mouse button combo alternates pokes and upward thrusts, which have less commitment. You can weave together left mouse attacks with right mouse attacks however you like to suit the situation. If you press the left and right mouse buttons together, you will do a fade slash. You can fade slash backward without a directional input, but you can also fade slash to the left and right with the associated directional input. Keep in mind you must do another attack before another fade slash, you can't do two in a row. Next up is the spirit combo. This is tied to the side mouse button. Notice when I try to do the combo with an empty sword gauge, I can only attack once. Notice though that when the gauge is filled up, I can get more hits in with a spirit combo. The flow of the long sword is to fill the gauge, complete a spirit combo, landing the last hit and increasing your gauge to the next level. That's right, you don't need to land every hit, just the final attack needs to connect. The three levels of the sword gauge are white, yellow, and red, each consecutively stronger than the previous level. Ideally, you want to get to red as fast as possible as it will allow you to deal the most damage and grant the most benefits from the longsword's other mechanics. Before getting to that though, I will demonstrate two other ways of increasing your sword or spirit gauge. For one, you can do a foresight slash before an incoming monster attack. You can perform a foresight slash at any time during a combo by pressing the right mouse button and side mouse button together. The iframes for this move are very generous, so it's not too hard to get the hang of. You will know you successfully landed a foresight slash if when you hit the monster, your spirit gauge fills up. Immediately follow this with a spirit blade attack with the side mouse button, and you will perform the final hit of the spirit combo, increasing your gauge another level. Granted, you hit the monster. Another way of increasing your spirit gauge is through the special sheath counter. Again, this move is access mid combo by pressing the side mouse button and spacebar together. As a quick side note, if you struggle pressing two buttons together, you can map a button combination together as a single input in the key binding section. Personally, for the special sheath, I use a custom mouse button because it's quick and easy for me, but I know not everyone has a fancy mouse, so I thought I'd just include this as a fun fact. Now, this move puts your character into a defensive idle stance. The purpose of this move is to wait until the last moment before a monster strikes you and press the side mouse button to parry, damaging the monster and increasing the level of your spirit gauge. It takes some getting used to, but once you get a handle on it, it's easy and great fun. Alternatively, you can press the left mouse button from this position and do an IE slash. This is a more offensive maneuver that when landed will replenish your spirit gauge automatically for a short period of time. Now once you have your red gauge, you have a few options of how to use it. These are tied to wire bug moves, so let's get into it. Your primary wire bug move is soaring kick, which is R plus left mouse button. If you don't have any spirit levels or you don't press any follow up input, you will do a plunging thrust and your spirit gauge will slowly replenish itself. However, what you really want to do is reach red spirit gauge, land the soaring kick and immediately press the side mouse button as you land on the monster. This will result in a jumping slash attack that hits multiple times dealing devastating damage. It is easily one of the best moves in the longsword's kit. The bread and butter of many longsword players is to get to red gauge, do this move, get to red gauge again quickly, and repeat over and over. But that's just one option. You can also invest your gauge in a wire bug move tied to R plus right mouse button. This move is serene pose and places your hunter in a defensive stance with a cross section of wire bug silk in front of you. This move is basically an auto counter and any move that lands in that zone in front of you is parried and deals massive damage to the monster depending on how high your spirit gauge is. It costs two wire bugs though and has a long cooldown so be warned. 
And that's it for the basics for the longsword using mouse and keyboard controls. I have a final guide for a longsword coming out soon that will include a more in-depth look into the switch skills and suggested builds and play styles for the weapon, so keep an eye out. I've been King Rob Rule, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!